my daughter, she play hard to get. Mm -hmm. I asked her, do you love me? She goes, <laughs> I See. said, do you want to kiss me? She goes, no. I said, do you want to hug mommy? No. <laughs> See, sounds like the women I've dated in my life. Right? Before I met my wife, I got that reaction of every girl. See, there you go. See, she's it's ridiculous. being trained well. See? Yeah, she does not. I said, that's good for you in the future, Marco. I said, that's good. But mm -hmm. I kind of want her to like me more. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Jiaoying Summers. Welcome to Tiger Milf Podcast. I am so sorry we were not releasing the past two weeks because uh, I got booked on this international film, which is a Hollywood movie in Spain, in Madrid, right after my Apollo show. I had to cancel my recordings in New York City. I had so much fun in Spain. Uh, I felt like uh, I really need to you know, pay back big for you guys because you've been waiting for two weeks. So this week, we have an amazing guest. He's such a treat. He's so gorgeous, so handsome, and he's so magical. Are you ready for the one and the only, the very amazing, Murray Sarchuk? <laughs> I said it right! Yes, you did. Woo, 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 you? Sarchuk. I, yes, Sarchuk, you got it. How are you doing? I am doing fabulous. Good. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. He did some sprinkle on my face before See. he got in the studio. That's, <laughs> that's true love. I, I, I appreciate Murray so much because I told him I'll be running late in order to make me feel less guilty. I think he showed up on time, but then he will make sure he walk him after me so I don't feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. But we're here together. Look at this. We're yeah, doing we're it. Together. We made it, right? We're Made it this, huh? in Vegas. Yes, in Las Vegas. Yes. I mean, yeah. Have you done your show here tonight yet, or did you work last night? Tonight is your tonight first is show, our right? first night. That's exciting. I came back from um, uh, Madrid yesterday, yeah. last night. How was the shoot? It was really great, uh, and yeah. I was very impressed with uh, the Spanish crew. There's this girl. Her name is Celia. She is uh, the line producer, and uh, we are in this like huge, like a Russian old mansion filming something there's like a lot of rooms different corners whenever i am not filming i would run to a room and sit there just literally snuggle up at the corner and whenever they need me she can find me in 30 seconds she's like a <laughs> phew she's like hi jogging we need you i was like why can she like she's so fast at finding me then i'm like oh the spaniards they are so good at invading and taking america i mean you know, <laughs> native people's spa spaces you know See? she just know it's in their know, blood it's, it's in their blood, blood. they they, yeah. they that blood home. they know where you are they'll come there That's and it. take you to exactly. work <laughs> like you are my slave go to work bitch yes. i'll find you whenever i need you in one second you know exactly. they found the they found the uh like the like a north america right the Line. Yeah, like, uh, that's Columbus. right. Yeah, yeah. He's Spanish. Columbus, I, you know what? I'm Canadian, so I'm going to plead the fifth on that. Yes, but uh, but he could be Spanish. He might have a little Spanish in him. I'm not sure. I think so. Uh, you know? Anyways, it was fun. The food was good. It's just the crew. People are nice. When they, they are go. nice, make your life easier. Yes. Did you have a lot of lines? Was it a big role for? It yes, or what? it's a lot of lines. Um, I and the funny thing is that uh, uh, I did all the little relaxing part, and then the last day of shooting is me having my six page dialogues as I long. <laughs> really? And then we we, we had to use a different uh, mansion for the bigger bathroom. Is a shoot, shoot in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then something wrong with the communication, whatever. And uh, when they were covering me, and then for six pages dialogue, they're like, you have to be out in 15 minutes. No. <laughs> so so he's like, I so said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I did one take. Really? Yeah. Was and it, it was Spanish or English? English. Okay. I did one take. It was actually pretty good. All right. Uh, and I was very, very happy. I was able to, you know, there's like 80 crew. I was sure. able to, you know, not yeah. ruin everybody's life because I'm not going <laughs> to stay extra day because I, exactly. I have to leave sure. yesterday. So that sure. was kind of like, I was very proud of me. Good. That's amazing. I'll look forward. To, when's it going to come out? Do you know? I think uh, around like uh, summertime next year. That's exciting. Which is great because, yeah. uh, you know, the sex strike and writer strike and uh, this movie was able to start shooting right after. Yeah. And they already have the permits. And the, so the movie's going to come out earlier next year with a lot of, with a lot of competition with other movies. Of course. Anyways, I'm happy to be in movies. I'm yeah. very grateful to not be with my children. You know? Yeah, right. Exactly. I didn't see them for two weeks. How was it? It was very good to not yeah. see them. Yeah, really it was good? I, I, miss, I miss them though. <laughs> I do miss them. I miss, uh, I miss them. I miss, I think my son is just like, he's so sweet. He just, he loved me so much. My daughter, she play hard to get. Mm -hmm. I asked her, do you love me? She goes, <laughs> I See. said, do you want to kiss me? She goes, no. I said, do you want to hug mommy? No. 
See, sounds like the women I've dated in my life. Right? Before I met my wife, I got that reaction of every girl. See, there you go. See, she's it's ridiculous. being trained well. See? Yeah, she does not. I said, that's good for you in the future, Marco. I said, that's good. But mm -hmm. I kind of want her to like me more. <laughs> and my son, I'm like, stop telling me you love me. Don't lick my face. Marco, do you want to hang out? No. You know, it's yeah. just like, anyways. I know. That's all right. And then before you know it, they'll be gone, grown up, and... Uh, you know, then and then you'll be wanting to see them more. So. Yeah, and then we will become not so cool for them. Exactly. Because now we are the cool one. Totally. And then you're not cool, and then you're cool again. But you'll always be cool. I don't know about that. You, I, I don't know. I hope I am. You're I a magician. Know. We're trying to have kids this year, so I'm hoping. I'm so excited. Yeah, so we're hoping, uh, hope they're cool. I don't know. I they will responsibility. be super, super cute. There yeah. is, there is responsibility. So but the, but the, but the, you will be like, everybody will be so nice to your son so they can, <laughs> they can see Uncle Mary. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm excited. That's, That's so wonderful. great. I, I actually, I, I just really um, wanted to, I just feel like uh, you, you were able to lead a life, you know, with your dream fulfilled. And also like you also have the, such a balanced life as, as an entertainer, uh, you know, you found love. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just felt like what, what, what is, uh, just think is inspiring for you to share with young, uh, young artists. Like what, what, when, when you decided that you want to become an entertainer, um, um, as as a magician, mm -hmm. when, like when you were a little little yeah, boy. I, you know I'm from Vancouver, Canada originally, so I'm Canadian. I've been mm -hmm. in the states now about 35 years, and you know I watched TV like everyone else did, and I just thought it was the coolest thing that you could act or be, do comedy or do magic, and people would pay you enough to live your life. I thought because you know I grew up in a household that they all worked for the railway. They were you know blue collar workers. They worked hard for their money nine to five and they had a pension plan and all this other stuff. So I thought no way somebody gets paid to sing and that's it or they get paid to just act or do comedy. I thought that's amazing. So I, thought, I wonder if I can do that. So as a young child you know as a kid I started dancing professionally because it's just something I could do. I played music. I did anything like that because I just enjoyed I think the attention you know mm -hmm. like we all do. Oh yeah. You know and then uh, when I got into magic, I realized, wait a minute, I don't need a movie to be in. I don't need a comedy club to try to be funny, or I don't need a theater to dance in. I could do tricks for like birthday parties or small little things and get paid. You are the show. You know? Yeah, I can just, I can control the whole thing and make money right away. Yeah. So when I was like 12 or 13, I'd do kids' birthday parties for $50 for like half an hour wow. at 12 years old. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. It's a lot of money now for half an hour, but you know, for most people, you know, but, but as a kid, I thought this is wonderful. So that's kind of how it all started. So I'd, I just thought, well, uh, I'm good enough. To, to make 50 bucks for half an hour. And I just thought, well, if I can keep fooling people. So now I've fooled people for almost 50 years. I just turned 50 a week ago. Can you believe you that? You don't look 50. Oh, 49, huh? <laughs> yeah, you look, I think you look like a 35, 36. I appreciate that. I'm going to pay you later for that. I'll yes. pay you later. Yes. The dark glasses and the hair. The older I get, I'm like Goldie Hawn. I just keep pushing it forward. So it's just a nose now. So I just yeah. keep looking younger and younger. Yeah, that's the Goldie Hawn trick. Yeah, uh, yeah that's great. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I, I, want, I, I think it's very... Um, very interesting. When you were such a, like a young boy, would you mind for me to ask you, like when you were thirteen, like you were making fifty dollars for half an hour? What what would be like a, the like for example, your dad, like how much money he makes a month? Oh, at that time, you know, he worked for the railway in the nineteen eighties, so he probably made about only thirty five thousand a year Canadian. You know, so that, and he was in his 50s back then, 40, well, 50s, yeah. So, you know, that's a big difference, you know. So, so that's why he wasn't so know. mad at you for no. pursuing, being, a, being an entertainer. Because most parents, they hate when kids want to be an entertainer. They want yes. you to become a doctor, lawyer. But when he can see you actually are putting in the hard cash, yeah. he's thinking, oh, Yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, I remember, you know, because he so you was, didn't have to fight so hard to, to pursue your dream. I didn't have to, but he also was the type to say, hey, you know, when you get older, you should get a pension plan, have, you know, so you can relax and have money come in. And I said, I know. And then I got a cruise ship contract to do a show on a cruise ship when I was 19, 20 years old. And don't forget, I was in Canada. So the Canadian dollar is weaker than the American, right? So basically 76 um, cents um, American is $1 Canadian. So that's the difference around that. So I got my first contract at 20 years old for $1,100 a week, American, Ooh. on a cruise ship. For two month, it was a two month contract. So I was making what about forty four, uh, forty four hundred dollars a month, which was about close to about fifty five hundred, six thousand dollars Canadian a mm -hmm. month. I never thought I'd make that much money in my lifetime, let alone doing magic at twenty years old. And so when I showed him the contract, he's like, "Oh my God, that's more money than I make." All my life, and I've worked all my life to be where I'm at. And he was a quite a high position at the railway. And that was after that contract, he was like, "You know what? Go do your thing." Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. And also, he probably understand later on. It's like, uh, 
you don't want to retire because no. you have fun, like you're doing what you love, so you don't really work. Yes. You're just yeah. playing. That's right.、Always. And you have, yeah, you're just playing, making people happy and laugh. Yes. So therefore, you still want to, you still want to do、yeah. it. You always. always want to do it. Yeah, of course. And also, you know, as you know, you can never rest on your laurels. You know, you can never rest. On something, you know, say you did your movie or whatever the case is, you can't just sit on that and go,、oh, "I did that." Because after a while, you got to keep changing and being、yeah. different and because, reinventing yourself. You yeah,、know? because for you, when when you are a successful magician, people people know that you you can do so much. They expect more from、That's、you.、Right. They keep expecting more, expecting more. So whenever you have a big achievement, you actually. You get kicked back to ground zero. Like、That's、you、right. have to start over. Of course,、yeah. because you don't compete with the people you compete. You used to. You used to be with. You are、yep. now in the next level, and you people just expect you can give more. Of course, and if、yeah. you don't, if you do the same thing, they 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 hate you. Of course, or it's just not interesting. You yeah, know? and that always you know that's the way it works with anybody. You know, you, how many singers or how many entertainers you've seen in your life, from Frank Sinatra, even Michael Jackson when he was alive, he was so big, and then he never worked for years, and then he worked again, and then you know sometimes they live or die. But but everyone has their you know you know even if you're young and you make it so big. I mean, look at Andrew Dice Clay. You know, famous comedian. He was the first comedian to ever sell out Madison Square Garden. Phenomenal. This is back in the eighties. He, he made you know? a comedy. He made a comedy. Huge, like you know.、That. Yeah,、uh-huh. and he also made a lot of things back in the day. He can get away with now. I think you say anything that he says now, you're probably going to be canceled. But but that's our world now. But, yeah. But with him, he was the first one to sell at Madison Square Garden, which is unbelievable. But now he plays here in town. He plays the Laugh Factory because. You can never stay at that level forever. I mean, you、yes. can try,、yeah. and maybe you can, but very, very few people. I think can, very you know, few people, like、yeah. very few people. Yeah, it's not easy. It. It's not even, you know. Yeah. Even look at Cher. You know, Cher, legendary. Yeah. Can Cher sell out a seventy thousand seat arena like Taylor Swift right now? I don't、Because、think she could. The Gen Z don't know who she is. No, so I think she could sell at five thousand seats, easy. Yes, she share, but I don't know seventy thousand. That's a big number. Beyonce,、yeah. Taylor Swift. Now, when Taylor Swift's sixty, is she going to sell at seventy thousand seats? Who knows? Pretty probably, hard to believe. Probably not, because、no. all the people, you know? her fans, the Gen Z people, spent、yes. all their money on her concert.、Sure. They broke by then. Sure, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They paid for their kids for yeah, their college. Yeah, they are hilarious.、Right? Those Gen、yes. Z kids, they are going to go to、yep. Europe to 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 go to go to Paris. Yeah.、Uh, with the, literally, they are going to have the budget of their like a、uh, yearly income. They spend、yep. the whole year income on this one flight and、yes. food out in Paris to see Taylor. It's true. Young、right? people are crazy. Like no. I, I just.、Uh, Oh, I I really think it, it, for me personally, it's very interesting. What、uh, does it take to become a magician? Like when I say magician, is、mm-hmm. magician like you, like a renowned, respectful, successful magician? Because、uh, because I think it's diff- very different from comedy. So I would、mm-hmm. just wanted to ask you, could inspire、mm-hmm. me for my career, mostly imp- inspire the younger people who wanted to get into magic. I think the most important thing is I've never looked at myself as just a magician. I've always looked at myself as an entertainer.、Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think if you look at yourself as just an entertainer, you're gonna you're gonna be appealing to a lot more people. Yeah.、Um, if you're just in, like say if you're just a trumpet player, or you're just a singer,、um, that's lovely. But if you can be an entertainer, it's a whole different package. And what I mean by that is Dolly Parton isn't just a singer. She's、mm-hmm. an entertainer. Yeah. Reba McIntyre is not just a singer. She's、mm-hmm. an entertainer. She acts. She sings. She's a judge. She's a host.、Um, she's a mom. You know, she's everything. And whereas, which is great. But there's other people who are just singers. You know,、mm-hmm. and that's lovely. But I think you really need. Look at David Foster, who produces. You know, Joss Groban and Michael Bublé. He's not just a music writer. He's a composer.、Um, he's a, a piano player. He sings.、Yeah. Um, all sorts of things. And, and he's also a personality.、Mm-hmm. You know, so I think when you go into something. First of all, to become a magician or anything, try to be different, you know. And don't you don't have to go too far off who you are, you know. You rely on where you come from, your looks, your accent. That's a beautiful because no one can be you. I can't be you, you know what I mean. And if you can, and no one can be you. So the more you can lean in、yeah. on you, your lifestyle, your background,、uh, you know, all that stuff. You're more original. Don't try to be Tom Cruise. Don't try to be Wanda Sykes. Don't try to be Jim Carrey.、Uh, try to be you. And the more you can be you. The more original be indirectly because no one's you, you know.、That's, so just just pull out the things that are more eccentric about you, you know what I mean. So so for me, it's my hair, my glasses. I do magic, but I'm not serious. When you look like this, how can you be serious? I look ridiculous. But you know what I'm saying. So you kind of pull those things out, and you become kind. And you also want to be somewhat commercial. You don't want to be too left and right because if you're too left and right, you won't get hired for commercials. You won't get hired for movies. You know what I mean. You still want to be different enough, but not so different. 
you can't get jobs that have a lot of money that can pay you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you can't, mm-hmm. it's kind of a catch-22. Yes, that's you know? solid gold. You know, I think it's important, you know. Yes. But, uh, but, but be different, but don't go so off the rails. I got friends that will only do comedy um, for adults, which means they swear. They will always swear. And I'm like, swearing's fine in comedy. Nothing's wrong with that. But swear because it's funny and it makes your point enjoyable. Don't swear just to swear because you can't get on primetime TV swearing. Yes. You can't. You can go on streaming now, of course, Hulu and, you know, HBO and all that stuff. But that's lovely. And I know that's where it's become. But for you to be on an ad or a commercial, you really got to have two personalities. And Bob Saget did, obviously. Bob Saget was everybody's dad. Mm-hmm. But as you know, when he did stand-up, he was one of the dirtiest comics out there. Mm-hmm. But that was okay because he had both worlds. Yeah, he can he do could both. do that. Yeah. But if he started with, I think that comedy is really, really rough and dirty all the time i don't know if he would have been seen as a father on tv yeah way back in the day you yeah. know but i think you have to really be smart about the way you market yourself yeah. and and if you want more work then embrace that and figure out a way how can i get more people to like me and hire me yeah i think it's really important to like when you just started what you talked about is like first of all you have to be you and secondly you have to be smart i, I when you say entertainer you are you 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 are a businessman who runs the show business of you. Mm-hmm. People don't most artists don't understand it's a business, oh so they are so cocky. They piss off all the important people, and they may be more talented than some people for, but they don't get anything, and then they get bitter, they give up, and they become mm-hmm. they suck. Mm-hmm. And that's just this, this, like for me, I came from business background, so I think my business talents really helped me in comedy mm-hmm. in four years i've mm-hmm. achieved things most people wouldn't think about that's right and i talk about things i would do people think i'm crazy and mm-hmm. too ambitious but i think it can be done if mm-hmm. it's done right i agree if you are if i was just gonna stand in line waiting for the open mic i'm still an open mic comedian because it takes you eight years to open mic before you find your voice of course but i bought my club I'm, mm-hmm. The moment I, I, two months later, I'm like, no, I can't stay in line for three, like for three hours for five minutes or not, even not getting on stage. I'm buying my own place Smart. so I can be on stage 10 hours a day. That's I was hosting 10 hours open mic. Then people said like, oh, you hacked the system because you bought a club. I said, I'm not embarrassed about no. buying a club. Of course. I need to be on stage of because I, when I see people on stage, I like, you know, they are good or bad. And uh, mostly it's because they are talented and they have hours under their belt. Mm -hmm. So I need that hours under my belt. That's what I needed. And uh, I really felt that uh, when you say um, you have to be loyal to yourself, because if you are not proud of who you are, you can't really bring out the magic. And uh, I couldn't, I, I, when I got the audition for the movie, it was on February. There's like six pages, very long dialogue and I was gonna go on a, a flight to go to a tour and I, I need to tape it and I made appointment to tape at 5 p.m. I went there and I told my guy who taped for me I said I, I don't memorize this and I know they prefer to be memorized I can't do it I tried to memorize it also try to make sure I pronounce things correctly mm-hmm. it, it was very awkward because I can't act all I was worrying about is did I pronounce this right of course did I forget this line and then I said, you know what? I'm going to hold the script. I'm going to be me. If I cannot uh, remember it, I'm going to just say whatever I improv, think it was. Yeah. I'm going to improv the shit. I just uh, did it with me. I was uh, having fun. And mm-hmm. I, I said, like, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm going. I just left and he sent the tape and I got a job. Amazing. Yeah. We were like, wow, we just, uh, we want to, Mm-hmm. Her to be more like a Jiao Ying Summers. We want Jiao Ying Summers to sure. be her. Yeah. And they actually decided that this girl is doing stand up because they just really want me to sure. her. So I was just uh, so that whenever I am in trouble, being me is going to save me. Of course, it's true. Like, it, well, because you're comfortable with yeah. that. You know who that is. That's something you've worked on all your career in show business. And you realize as you get better and better and the audience accepts you, you realize, oh, you know, this is who I'm becoming, you know, and that's where your comfort zone is. You can go right in. Robin Williams is amazing at that. Robin Williams could pop into anything right away. Mm-hmm. And you know his comfortable characters because he'd always go back into that. Same with... Jim Carrey, he'd mm-hmm. go back to certain things he knew would always get a laugh. And then he works on other stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's very nice when you're comfortable with yourself and you can go, I'm good with this. I got this. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It takes a while. It takes a long time, you know? Yeah. I always say it's that 10, there's a book 10, out. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours, you know? Yeah. And it's really true. It is. You know, not 8,000, not 7,000, 10,000. Yeah. And people under, don't understand what that means. That means literally, like I always say, it's like 
um, brushing your teeth or it's like tying your shoe. The first time you brush your teeth, as a baby, you don't, you don't know how to use a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. You don't have teeth, you know, but then all of a sudden by the time you're nine or 10, you just, you know how to do it. And you don't know why you know it. I don't remember when I learned how to brush my teeth. But I just do it. Yeah. Well, because I've done my ten. Yeah, and it seems so simple, but that really is an easy metaphor to teach the ten thousand hours or tying my shoelace. I don't even need to look because I've done it so many times. And so when you can walk on stage and do one hour of magic comedy singing without even thinking, Mm -hmm. that's when you really enjoy your job. Yeah. Yes, it become mm-hmm. uh, repetition, repetition, repetition. It becomes second nature. Yes, I, that's actually where I wanted to, to ask you. Is that uh, I know your life is so glamorous because uh, you know you're on stage. You make people laugh. You amaze them. But what is uh, what is all the hard work behind it? Like the years, decades of hard work since you were a young boy. Like wh- when do you practice? Like. What, how do you do it? You know, when I was younger, really become great. I didn't have material. So like what you did, you go to open mics or get your own club and you start every day, you start adding something different or new or seeing a premise. And then all of a sudden that premise or idea gets a laugh or a reaction. You go, oh, I'm going to write more about that. Same with magic. I'll think of things that I would like to see that people would think that are amazing or funny. And I go, oh, that's interesting. And I always try to skew things a little bit different because my comedy and, and magic, the style is everything kind of goes wrong. And then at the end, it goes right, and there's a miracle. That's just my style. It's very Dennis the Menace, uh, which is a little cartoon character. And I, I thought that's a cool angle because most magicians are trying to be God. They're trying to be this very serious persona. And every time I watch the magician, I'm going, "You're bullshitting me. I don't believe you. Like how? No, what are you doing? And they're serious, pointing hands and waving. I thought you got to be kidding me. So for me, I thought, you know what? That's not me. But if I were to say the obvious things on stage that I'm really thinking, that would be very funny. And then do a trick that's actually really amazing. And that's who I am. And that's kind of who I am when I'm on stage. And and it, and I, and the more and more you realize that works for you, you more and more you do it, you know? So it's one of those things where I think as you go along, you practice stuff. Like I'm getting ready for a TV show. I'll work on a new idea or a new trick. But I already have two hours of material I've done for years. So usually my shows consist of that, that material. But every once a year, if I do a new TV show, I'll put a new trick in. And if it goes really well and I like it, I'll go, you know what, I'm going to put that in my show. And after about two months, I go, you know what, that's a really good bit. So I'll take out other stuff I used to do for years and put that in. But I'd say one every 10 tricks I come up with that I do on TV. Because every time I go on TV, I always try something new. I never want to repeat something on TV ever, Mm -hmm. which I have, but I try not to. That trick sometimes is so good, I'll go, yeah, that's going to be great in my set. But sometimes it's a good time just to do one time and it works because it's different. But some things are good enough that I'll actually try and keep in my show, you know. But one out of ten things I think I'll fall in love with and I'll put in the show, you know, like anything, you know. I, I love when uh, when uh, when you try, you make people laugh and they think something's going to go wrong and then you amaze them with fixing it and, and mm-hmm. to surprise them. It's just, it's like life, actually. Yes, 100%. You are not God. You can't just like, uh, everything goes your way. That's it's, right. It's... Yeah, it's just like the mechanic of magic. It's not uh, actually taking people into a journey. Yes. Yeah, actually, do you, like, do you have shows when, when I'm here? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I have a show. I'm, what's today? Thursday. I'm off for the next three days, but I have a show. I work Sunday through Wednesday. Oh my Tropicana. God, Sunday, 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 Sunday. Mm-hmm. Okay, at I have four to, o'clock. I need to, I need to take my kids. Yeah, I have two em. children and my mom. I would yeah, love to. Bring them all. Uh, I need four tickets. I'm no gonna problem. done. S- let me ha- see how I buy it. Or you want? No, no, no. I got them. I'm gonna get you. Us. you have to pay. Ooh, oh my! <laughs> I, because my son is going to be so amazed by you. He's what four? He's four, he'll four and a half. Yeah. He's four and a half. Yeah, he'll yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah the little one it might be a little hard, but yeah. your daughter. But, uh, but I'm so excited. Okay, Sunday. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Great. I'm yeah, so excited. Tropicana. So. Tropicana. Yes, I'm so excited. They are gonna have such a great time. Yeah. This is this is just wonderful. Um, I like. Do what do your parents? Like when they see you perform, like mm. how do they feel? They love it. You know, my mom, she just turned 84 and I lost my dad about eight years ago. He was 83, mm. but he had a great life. And um, and so she's in town actually. For my, she came in for my birthday and she's here for the holidays now because she stays with us. And my wife loves her to death, which is great. Thank God for that. You are and, so lucky. Um, you know, and so it's yeah, the best. The <laughs> I'm very best. lucky. So she came in and we just had my birthday party a few days ago. And she's she's super laid back. She loves coming to the shows and watching. You know, she knows most of my stuff. And she's always been supportive, you know what I mean? And it's it's interesting. She'll watch the TV shows I'm on. This Monday, I'm going to be on uh, Masters of Illusion on CW. It's my 10th season on oh. that show, and it airs Monday nights now. So. Is your mom is a little, little fangirl? Like, when, whenever you go on bit. TV, she'll prepare? Like, yeah, uh, just bit. sit there and get her snacks and just like this? Yeah, she always watches and send it out to her friends. friends. My dad was funny, though, when he was in... 
alive and came to town to hang out. He would, my mom would come down to the casino and, and see my show, but my, once every couple of days, because she'd be at home making cookies and hanging out with my wife. But my dad, um, my dad would come to the show every time, every show, and no gambling, he didn't like to gamble. He'd sit in the green room, eat some snacks, have a glass of Coke or something, and then he'd watch every show, like every day he was here, he'd sit there, he'd laugh at the same jokes and all that, and he never wanted me to introduce him in the audience because he said he wanted to hear the audience's real reaction to my show after my real reaction to after real reaction to after my show basically of how people talk because if I introduced them of course they're gonna say oh a great show your son's wonderful because that's what you say but he wanted to actually hear what they really said about my show with them you know not knowing he's my father so he lo always loved that side of it he's so, such a great you know. dad he he's, he's, he's yeah. so proud he's so proud of yeah he's they are so proud of you it's just yeah. Um, it's for for me. Uh, I, I have Asian mom, so she's very different. Is she what she like? Uh, she come to my show. She would uh, just uh, ask me. There, uh, there's you know. Sometimes they don't laugh. <laughs> she you would know, say that. Can you fix it? She would say that. Yeah, oh, that's the, funny. It's, the, it's, the, it's between the laughter. They don't that's laugh. So funny. She's like, well, Ali Wang wouldn't find like an excuse like you do. You know, maybe. <laughs> and then I got I got interviewed by um, Harvard. Uh, Crimson is a mm. big article on me, and then they came out, and uh, she always wanted me to go to Harvard. Yeah. So I said, "Mom, I didn't go to Harvard, but not everybody went to Harvard uh, is yeah. profiled by the Crimson." She goes, "Well, do you think they know they can actually get uh, Margaret Cho?" <laughs> Man, that's so funny. Did she come to many of your shows? Did she watch many of your shows? Um, she didn't understand English. She's learning English now, okay. and uh, she. I think one one time she was on my podcast. It okay. went really viral in China. I, I think we had uh, in one clip mm -hmm. we had over a billion views. Oh in no one way! Clip. That's that made amazing. me an instant uh, celebrity in China. Course, Just yeah. and my when my mom sure. got on my podcast, made me famous in China. I was never single. I didn't even release it in China. People in China took it from my TikTok and oh, they reposted it. in Weibo and the Chinese. Uh, by dance and it would just went viral because I said, "Mom, in America, I'm beautiful. In my <laughs> dark skin's beautiful. In my big lips, beautiful." She goes, <laughs> "No." Uh, then she just this because that make a lot of Chinese girls relate. Their mom is just so critical sure. with them, and everybody relating. All the moms like I sound like that. All the girls like, "Oh my God, that's what's happening to me." Yeah, yeah. And so people start relating, and my my mom saw that. She's she said. Uh, and then so a lot of people are saying your mom is so very abusive. You know, everybody was attacking her online, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just uh, I just said, Mom, I'm sorry. You know, they were very mean to you. Blah blah. She's like, No, I don't care. There's a billion views. I'm going back <laughs> to your take to your podcast. What do I do next time? This time, slap you? <laughs> she just like she's always about the results. See, she understands getting views. See, yeah, she's, she's like it's good for you because you get GQ. That's you, right. You got a cosmopolitan. Yeah. You know, and they, we we were trying to get people to pitch you, and they don't want you there because you're. You're not traditionally beautiful. Now they want to profile how you look sure. because you're being you. Yeah, and yeah. I said, I said, I said, I just like, I know my mom support me, but she, I wish, I sometimes I wish my mom could be kinder to me verbally mm -hmm. because it just, uh, I said, the uh, one time I think something really great happened. I'm like, can I have a hug, mom? She goes, no, mm. no, 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 no. Mm. I'm making you dumplings. Oh, wow. I don't want to get like the thing on your. On you, oh, like interesting. The, the flower. On were, your you, were you a young kid at that point? No, it was like last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's like, no. Mm. I said, why? She's like, I'm busy making your dumplings. Why are you doing nonsense? You mm. know, it was yeah. crazy. And I'll call her and uh, I'll just say, uh, Mom, I, I I miss you. She goes, Why would you miss me? Mm. I'm always mean to you. What do you mean? She doesn't understand. So yeah. she doesn't even say, like, I love you back. Maybe your nickname should be Dumpling. And then I, she'll hug you. She called me dumpling lips. <laughs> Did she really? Yeah, because that's funny. She, because my lips are big for Chinese girls. You have great lips, yeah. She has two dumpling lips glued together. She called me dumpling lips. <laughs> she goes, dumpling lips are very bad, but I guess they are good in America. In which America, is good, yes. Which is good. Yes. It's very, very sweet. Yeah, I, I, you got so lucky. You, your, your mom and your your mm -hmm. girl get yeah. along. Yeah, because Danny's amazing. Sometimes they don't. And no. it's really painful. It's a, a, a real hard time. Yeah, a lot of, you know, when you get married to somebody, you just don't marry them, you marry the family. You do. you do. I know they're not always living with you and that, but you see them for holidays and stuff like that, and people don't realize that. It's wonderful to have a great partner or somebody you love, but you really marry the whole damn family. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, you know, so, yeah I totally get it. My, you know. my first marriage, um, it was my college sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I think we really 
Um, we were both very young, but he's one of the best person I've ever met. He's mm-hmm. a truly, he's an angel. Mm-hmm. We, we we don't talk anymore, but I still love him in mm-hmm. a way as of I, I want the best for him. Sure. He has a fiance, girlfriend, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for him. Like I can love him, not sure. like romantically yeah, anymore, no, no, but I love that man so much because my second marriage was very pretty brutal. My, mm-hmm. my ex-husband was very uh, verbally mentally abusive. Mm-hmm. I, I was very traumatized, but uh, I because my uh, because the first husband thinking about people like him gave me hope mm. of not all men are bad. How long I were you remember. married to your first husband? For? We we started we were together since like when I was twenty. So we've been mm. married. Uh, I think like a long like five or six years. Okay, and but, then your second husband. How long were you married to? Uh, Five years, okay. five years, but the, the marriage lost five years, but yeah, okay. we separated like a, like two and a half years before mm, sure. the divorce. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I just, uh, when I think about him, the thing is that his family never really wanted me. Yeah. And it, they made it difficult really? for us to be together. Yeah. We, we, they didn't do anything, but they just kind of do not, they, they, they are okay with him dating me. Mm. They are not okay with him marrying me. Is he, was he Chinese? He was like Russian American. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was a great man. Mm-hmm, he was yeah. wonderful. But yeah. I knew that deep down that was mm-hmm. kind of hard mm-hmm. for us. Sure. But that was not uh, why we, we didn't work out. Yeah. I was young and stupid. Mm-hmm. I didn't uh, understand that uh, how good I have it. Mm-hmm. And I was very ambitious, very young. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to settle down. I don't want children. I don't want anything to ruin my yep. career. Of course. Nothing yeah. can ruin your career, actually. Your no, career is going to happen itself. That's right. But when you're young and stupid, you just feel like, oh, this is going to ruin my career. This, no, you mm-hmm. don't have a career, bitch. Like, That's right. You don't right. have nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're true. <laughs> yeah, now yeah. I'm older. Like, I really see a lot of mistakes. I think when I admit my mistakes, it helps me forgive myself. 100%. And the sooner you can be honest with yourself, the sooner you can move forward. You know, yeah. Because no one's perfect. You know, no one's perfect. Everyone's got issues. You know, and if they think they're perfect, then that's even a problem right there. But, but you know, as soon as you can accept it and go, yeah, I was an asshole, or I was amazing and they were bad, or whatever the case is, and be honest with yourself. The sooner you can be honest with yourself, the sooner you can get going and doing better things. Be better yeah. to your kids. Be better to your career. Be better to your family, your wife, your husband, your lover, whoever it might be. But people, the sooner. But if you want to deny that, you take that with you. You yeah, know, and it, it, it doesn't help you in anything else, you know. It's the um, ego that ruins mm-hmm. everybody's life. It really the worst, is. Ego and jealousy are the two yes, worst things in the really world. It really ruins people's life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, your, 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 your girlfriend, mm-hmm. you guys, you, it's your fiance, right? No, we're married. We're married your for wife. two years. Yep, my yeah, wife, yeah. It's mm-hmm. time go by so fast. Yeah, I know. Because yeah. I remember mm-hmm. when, you were, when, you were, when you were engaged mm-hmm. on, on social media. That's right. And uh, uh, I just uh, didn't know two years go by so Crazy. fast. Crazy. We can't. Yeah, we've been together six now. So we started dating, what, 2017, I guess? So we've been married two years now, and it flies by. You know, the older you get, it's crazy. And I know you probably, because you have Also, kids, when your marriage right. is happy, it flies well, by. it does, yes. When it's unhappy. Oh, yeah, it takes forever. <laughs> it's long, right? <laughs> yeah, it takes forever. Yeah, if you want to have a long marriage, have an unhappy marriage. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are that so funny. Right. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. I used steal that know. joke, Amari. See, there you go. Take it. That's, a, that's a good joke. Yeah, that is a nice. really good joke. Yeah, it's yours. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I have this stupid joke. You're going to slap me after I tell you. But it was, I, I just want to advise everybody, whenever you're in the airport, do not order uh, chicken and waffle. Why not? They are disgusting. I, I I don't know when that ch- when this chicken was born. It was so gross. The waffle was like a rock. Yeah. The chicken look like a plastic chicken. When I taste it, it tastes like shit. The only thing standing out is the long hair on the chicken. It was... <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's classic. It's so stupid. That's funny. It's such a stupid Eat joke. more syrup, more Cause, syrup. Because like, the hair was so long, I'm like, That's the only thing standing out. <laughs> That's funny. On this dish. That's great. It's the fucking chicken hair. It was so gross. <laughs> it was crazy. very American chicken and waffles. Yes, very American. But the one is good. It's so good. It is good, but when you need go- to have moist chicken. Yeah, moist chicken and really yes. like fresh and a wet crispy. waffle. Maybe yeah, that's the name of the company: moist chicken, wet waffle. Yeah, <laughs> just s- squirt, squirt. Just think. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing a waffle waffle thing. We are exactly. sending. We are sending our chicken. Yes. I uh, I I just uh, wanted to ask you, like, uh, what what is. Uh, uh, do you think? Uh, do you think uh, uh, y- you can have it all? Like a, just as a, like a, just as an advice for younger people. You know, do I? You saying do I? Not think yourself I have it all as. Or you, how I, I think you have it all, but I think no. I want you to, uh, to tell people, people who's looking up to you, mm-hmm. uh, is that possible for one to have it all? I think it is possible to, for one to have it all. It all depends what your all means. 
See, I think so, people would say career and love. Yeah, but and it depends the older you get. Like somebody who's in their 20s, like you just said, all, all of us, we think we wanted something at that age. And we thought this is what we need to do to achieve it. And then you get to 30 or 40 or however old you might be. And you look back and realize, oh, wait a minute, I got that all wrong. Or sometimes you did get it right. You got lucky. Or you listened to somebody, even though you knew you thought they were wrong, but you listened and it was right. But I think Every, I think everyone's all changes a lot of times. You know, I think I think people have it all. They think they have it all if they have a mother and a father, or they have a child. But do they? But if their mother and father aren't good to them, is it is it happy having it all when you have a mother and father that maybe don't like you or don't support you or don't treat you well? So I have a lot of friends that don't have a good relationship with their father or their mother, and they don't make their life happy. Yes, they gave birth to them, and they they you know without them they wouldn't be here in this world, but just because you have a mother and father doesn't mean you have it all. Yeah. If your father's abusive, abusive or your mother's abusive, well then that's not having it all. You know, it's so just seeing things that look good, you know, seeing isn't always and believing. The paper, yeah. It's true. You see a mother, father, and a kid, and they look really happy, and they look like a J.C. Penny ad or a mm -hmm. Sears ad or whatever you want, Macy's ad. But you know, that's just a, that's just a moment in time. Like Facebook, mm -hmm. Facebook looks amazing, but people don't realize all the work it takes to look that amazing when behind the scenes you're you're not you know what i mean yeah. I, I remember what's the actor's name mike myers who was in um the shag me movies and all yeah. that i remember and he's from, he's canadian as well and he was i remember at the top of his game when he was doing all those movies making more money than god he'd mentioned that you know he wasn't happy i mean how are you not happy you're on tv you're one of the funniest guys in the world great actor you're producing all these money. I always think if you had money and a career, everything else falls in line. But then once you have that in line, now you want love or you want someone that loves you or maybe you want a child. All these other things that doesn't involve money um, come in line. But can't then when, buy it. You can't buy no, it with money. No, but then when you have all that, you're like, maybe you can't pay the rent. So it's always something yeah. that, but what people always think, oh, if I'm a millionaire, I'm going to be happy. I'm like, well, yeah, you'll be happy because you can pay your rent and you have a shower and a bed to live on. You never be poor or have food never there but now maybe you can't find somebody that will put up with your bullshit mm -hmm. or that maybe you'll put up with their bullshit i don't know or maybe people you know? people who will get closer to you because they can use you exactly so yeah you when never you, when know you have that fame and, and power and money now you wonder why people are Authentic. your friends that's another reason why I think like Adam, when your you father know, was uh, there he didn't want you to address him because he wanted to see what the people exactly would say without uh, exactly. your father being there exactly because he wouldn't have that privilege to hear it of course they're only gonna, gonna nice hear good things. things of course because it's your father yeah because they're yeah. her mother they're gonna say nice things so he always wanted to hear the the because, honesty, you know. Yeah, because when you're rich and powerful, you can't just wish, let me be broke so I can see who's my friend. Totally. Totally. <laughs> and that's why I think, you know, like you look at Adam Sandler and a few of the other actors that keep their friends really close, like old friends before they were famous. And, you know, as you know, Adam Sandler puts a lot of his friends in his movies because he loves them so much. Because now Adam Sandler's Adam Sandler, you mm -hmm. know. So why are friends with him now, you know? And same with yeah. me. A lot, a lot of my friends from my home in Vancouver and around, they're my closest friends because they knew me when I was trying to make it. They knew me when I was you know, cooking fish and chips and being a busboy and at a newspaper route and whatever I was doing. And so they, nothing's changed for them. You know, yes. whether I'm famous or not, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm more, more popular than I was before, but I really haven't changed who I am, you know. But, I wanted to so. uh, hear one of your very close friends from home, like no. you, your story with your one of your close friends, like uh, your friendship. I mean, a lot of Because I want to share know, mine too in Kentucky. Yeah, we you know, we all have friends that, I mean, they'll text me random things about if the house, a new house they're buying or something about their kid that they're doing. You know, and I'll send them a little gift for their kid or something for Christmas or whatever it might be. And I'm doing it because they're just my friends. I've known them since I was seven years old. Like, I've not changed. I know, yeah, if I walk around and people recognize me and take pictures, they're like, I can't believe these people are, like, taking pictures of you. Like, I went to high school with you. And I said, yeah, but it's, it's that's my job. You know, if they don't take pictures with me, that means I'm not selling tickets. If I'm not <laughs> selling tickets, I can't pay my mortgage. Yeah. So that's part of the job. You know, if I was an accountant, no one would take a picture of me. They'd thank me because I'm saving a lot of money, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't give, you know, they wouldn't give a shit, you know, so it's just my job, you know, so it's interesting to see people who knew me back then come hang out with me because it is a different environment, you know, but then when you come back to my house, I'm no different. Put my baseball cap on, my robe, my boxer shorts, and I have a cup of coffee or a beer and you bullshit with people, you know. So, it's awesome. Yeah. When I was in Kentucky, I remember I, I didn't have money to pay rent and um, I, I was, just, I didn't have a place to go. I had to find a place and my friend Beth, she's just like, you can sleep on my couch. And mm -hmm. then I slept on her couch for three months. Mm -hmm. And then I, I moved out to find, to move to, to LA and uh, 
she was uh, when I went back to tour in Lexington. So we just stayed together in the same hotel room, and we went to, to the same bars. We walked the streets, and mm -hmm. then I remembered we were walking to this country fair, like a Sunday fair, and there there's like a little place they had they, they had made feather earrings, and then I was touching, looking around, and she was touching those earrings. I said, "Do you like them?" And the owner said, "She she come here every week to touch these earrings because she really likes them." Mm. I said, "I'll buy all of them." <laughs> and nice. they were like, no, you don't have to. I said, no, it's fine. You have to have, wear them. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it's so expensive. I said, you let me live in your place for three months. I was I, I was nobody. I don't mm -hmm. speak English. I have no family. You didn't do it because I can become Zhao Ying Summers. Of course. And buy those earrings. Of course. Yeah, of course. And those earrings is going to give you so much joy. It's way more than of course. a couple hundred dollars. Exactly. She's just like, oh. And she was wearing them. <laughs> and uh, she, she, she she put them on a the wall. It just, it, it, and that's the kind of friend yeah. you know, I, I never going to stop talking to. And she makes me remember who I was. Yes. And, and it's also she knew you before you were popular, mm -hmm. before you had a successful career. Mm -hmm. you know, And you're no different to her. Like, yes, she knows your success. But, but when somebody knows you from the ground up, you see it them for who you knew them for. Now, yes, there are some people that do get famous and they become assholes. And yes. I've seen oh that. My I got, God. You know, this, and it happens. They really believe, you know, their shit doesn't stink. They really believe, you know, which is fine because one day down the road when they're 70 or 80, they'll realize that it's, it's very fleeting, so unnecessary. You know? So but unnecessary. There's a, and, and the older you get, you know, at least a lot of old stars I work with, I mean, legends in the business, they're super chill because they already went through that phase of trying, you know how when you're trying to be famous, you're trying to be more famous than you are because you're probably not famous. And so you got to act like you're famous and then you become famous and now you don't have to act as much. Well, some of them just keep acting famous, which becomes turning them to an asshole usually. Yes. But a lot learn that and then you go, wait a minute, I don't, I don't need to do that anymore. Like I'm not, why am I doing that? And then you realize people who are really established, who are successful, they're, they're actually probably some of the coolest people ever. Because yeah, they're just down so to true. earth. You know, like a, a very dear friend of mine is Alice Cooper, the singer. And I do his charity shows for years and his wife, Cheryl. And they're such nice people. And he's Alice Cooper. Like, he's a legend, you know, a rock legend. Everyone knows him. Even if you don't know his music, you know who he is. He's just iconic. And he's probably one of the nicest people you ever, ever meet in your life. He'll yeah. drive his own car. All he the... doesn't need people helping him. I mean, he, I'm sure they have all the people in the world. But he just really does his own stuff. He's just down to earth. Like, he's just, you know. So. That's the uh, you were talking about Goldie Hawn because I met her on set. She was the sweetest ever. Um, the charity I volunteer for, mm -hmm. um, the ch chairman went to like Thailand with her a long time ago. So mm -hmm. he want he know I'm gonna meet her. He want me to say hi to her because mm -hmm. most times they'd be like, "Don't talk to me." Mm -hmm. She's like, "I remember that. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweetheart, you are doing charity. That's so good mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. and it's good to do it when you, when you start when you're young." And she just. Uh, mm -hmm. She was just, uh, I, I, whatever I see her on TV, like I fall in love with this gorgeous, funny woman. Mm -hmm. When I see her, she, 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 she was having her hair and every, blonde hair and stuff. Like mm -hmm. she was, she was just, uh, she was just Goldie Hawn. She mm -hmm. was twenty four seven Goldie Hawn. Yeah, yeah. There's no, yeah, county bitch in there. No, it was no, no. just so beautiful yeah. for me to be like, oh my god. Yeah. What a sunshine! No wonder she is so blessed of with course. everything. And she loves what she does. You yeah. know, somebody said to me a couple of days ago said. You're so nice with people, and you really, when you're on stage, you really love what you do. Like, because they're comparing with some other people in, in town with head shows. And I say, why? Well, I, I, I love people. You know, when I go to work, I love people. Whether I'm having an argument with somebody before the, the show, or I'm having a bad day, or whatever, that you can't take on stage with you because that's not fair. That's not your job, and that's not their job to listen to that. You have oh my to, god! You know, you have to go on stage with why you're there to make people laugh. You know. I see a lot of comedians, you know, that get a little preachy or they start going off on stuff on stage just because, and it's not funny. They just, they feel like either they're famous enough that they can just talk to people now and not be funny uh, or whatever the case is. And that's another thing that I go, well, that's not your job. Don't, that pisses me off. I don't need your opinion. People are paid. And they're really come, famous people. Laugh. Like they're really famous. And these people are great comedians. At least they were. And a lot of times I see when comedians get really famous, they all of a sudden, it turns into a keynote speech. Yeah. And there's nothing's funny. Even some that have released specials really recently, and I go, you speak well, you look great, you're not stupid what you're saying, yeah. but I'm, I don't need a lecture. I'm not here to lecture. I, yeah. I want to I want to laugh. It's like when I go, say I want to go watch Bruno Mars. Well, sing. I don't need yeah. you to talk to me. I yeah. don't need you to joke around. I want, I want to hear those songs because yes. that's why I'm here. I'm not here. I'm sure you're a great 
you speak great and you have some great stories, but you're a singer. Yeah. So be funny, but get on with it. Sing. Yeah. I can you know? listen to TED Talk for free on YouTube. Exactly. I don't need you to do a yeah. TED Talk. So, so I see that a lot with comedians. Once they start to get a bit more fame, all of a sudden they just, they, the material becomes not funny anymore. They, get, they have a good idea and a good story, but it's a story. It's not funny. So it's just I think they lost the discipline to work out a good joke. To get just it right. know whatever they yeah. say is going to be. That's funny. my biggest. Well, because they're famous. They sell tickets because people can't believe they're watching them for 100 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever. They can't believe they're having an hour with these people. But but what they are now isn't what they became famous from. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, because you're like, well, I'm I'm glad I'm hanging out with you. You're nice and the thing, but it, you realize certain people. I think their audience members will accept that and go. I, I got to spend an hour with these people. I think others will be more analytical, like me. I'm always analytical. And I go, you're out there for an hour, and you maybe got six laughs. Like yeah. they really, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, I, I couldn't. Uh, uh, I'm um, more, I think I really relate to you because I was watching a big comedy star uh, in a stadium and uh, uh, he was drunk. He was mm -hmm. like drinking. Yep. I, I know he's high and uh, he was not uh, telling jokes. He was just talking about how rich he is and yep. how successful he is and how people suck. And mm -hmm. I, I just left. I, yep. I, I mean, I, I Shocking, would, isn't it? Yeah, I would actually die to see him in person. I would just like a, take a photo and be fingering. But after I watched that, I kind of stopped following things yeah. because being drunk and high on stage, yeah. I think that's the worst thing entertainers should do to mm -hmm. to to your fans because yeah. it just is it's just so stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people have a problem with that. You know, they don't feel like they can go on stage without that. But it's one of those things where if you can't function or do your job with your your addictions, you know, because a lot of people have them, unfortunately, then you shouldn't, you got to figure that out. You know what I mean? Well, how many bands you see, even rock and roll singers, they're lucky because they can sing and get away with it usually. But with comedy, as you know, it's so, in magic, everything's so precise to timing. You, you screw up one word as you're talking and it blows the whole joke. You got to rewrite it in your head quickly or you just blow it, you know? Oh, yeah. And if you're drinking or you're high or something, you miss that beat, you, and then now you miss the joke. It's done. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so I see people like that, and yeah, it's frustrating when you see people take advantage of their fame like mm -hmm. that. And I go, mm -hmm. well, you know, I didn't pay for that. But then you see other comedians, like Ron White. I think's phenomenal. I mean, he drank a lot on stage, but he was very good on stage. And now he stopped drinking. Um, but every time he walks on stage, he goes there to deliver jokes. Yeah. And he's very meticulous. Yeah. He's very on it, you know, at least in my opinion. And he's never really changed much, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And even Larry the Cable Guy, he comes right out right away and starts right off, yeah. you know? Because so, he's there to make you laugh. That's his job. Like, don't go there yep. to, to lecture young people to yep. do things. Exactly. Yeah, you know? to be a comedian, to, to be, just to be funny. Totally, just yeah. Just, yeah. I, 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 th I think I'm just talking so long with Maury, right? Producer Austin? <laughs> uh, Chase. Chase. Yeah. What 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 are we with time? Uh, we we've got about uh we've got like fifteen minutes. You good? Wow, nice. We're yeah. at fifteen minutes. That's great. Yeah. that's great. I just don't want to to like you know to rob more time. You're good. Uh, I'm good. I I I, I just it's such a time robber. You, you are giving you are giving so much gold. But let's do something fun. I want you to <laughs> do some magic. Magic. With me. What do you want to do? Whatever. I don't know. I gotta. Uh, I didn't bring anything really, but as a magician, you should never say that. So let me see what I have for you. Um, oh well, I got a really cool thing. Do I'm you happen to have a dollar bill on you? Uh, I give or a five or something. I give all my money. Can I have five dollars? Yeah, I think I've got a ten or something. I'm Just so like Chinese. <laughs> Even like last moment, I'm asking uh, the producer to give me money. See, look at that. See. See, I'm smart. I'm so Chinese. See, that's a real, like, that's a real Chinese lady. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. Look at her back to All right. Five dollars. Okay. Borrowed. Yes. Not even yeah, your borrowed. money. Look yeah. at that. Yes. That's Acting like your money. Yeah, it's my money. And oh. it's Chase, right? Yes, sir. All right, Chase. Chase. So, all right, you're watching. So my camera's here, so I'm going to play to the camera, all right? So you watch. It's five. Yes, five, five. It's five. Five dollars like that, right? You fold it like this, right? Mm -hmm. Like this. This is the secret move right here. You do the secret move like that. Uh -huh. Pinch it. Pinch it. Like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like that. See, just like like a fortune cookie. Fortune. Yes, fortune cookie. <laughs> See? I'm playing to my audience. Yes. Like that. And you go over here like this. Like that. Yes. You go over here like this. Like so. Like that. Go over here. <gasps> go over here. And you look really careful. Ah! Isn't, that wild? Isn't that cool? Ah! Isn't that wild? Isn't that crazy? Oh my god, I just came. See? <laughs> See? That's all it takes. See? I know my Asians. Oh my god. Okay. There you go.
Oh that my take gosh. Much. Mm. Isn't that great? That is amazing. That oh, one. my God. Yeah, yeah. No, Ben Franklin. What else oh. I got in here? Yeah. Five. Oh, my God. See, there's your $5 Chase. back. There Chase. You go. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. Chase, <laughs> did you see that? Yeah, I did. He just 20 x my $5. Exactly. I know. And made her come. So, you know what? Yeah. That's oh, what my I do. God. That's, That's great. what I do. I mean, you know. You should do that to the Canadian uh, money. <laughs> I know. It'd be like it'd be like a thousand bucks. <laughs> you don't, your president should ask you to. I know, do right? I know. The Canadian dollar. We should do a Ferrari. What do we? How many? How much of a debt is this country in now? Yeah, you, you own China money. You know that, right? Oh, America think, owns we? China money. Probably. Yeah, we, I think we debt. owe everyone money. Yes. I think. Yeah, because my my son, my daughter is so busy making iPhones for you guys, and you're exactly. not paying us for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my God! I want you to tell us what is your next show. My next show is going to be, that's a great question. My next show is going to be Sunday here in Las Vegas, which is at the Tropicana Lab. Which we are going. Yes, with the family, right? Yes. Oh, my son is going to be your biggest fan. Yeah. And so uh, we're doing that Sunday. And then I'm Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I work Laugh Factory. Mm -hmm. I have a few days off. I this Actually, this Saturday, I'm doing a charity called um, The Golden Rainbow. It's a charity show um, in support of AIDS. And we do it in Vegas as a group. So basically, different shows from Vegas combined do a full show mm -hmm. at the Tropicana at one o'clock this this Saturday and it's basically all the money goes back to the foundation which is amazing so I'm all about charities I think it's super important I also think it's great karma as well yes. you know? oh yeah I believe that this is another thing also I tell people in the business when you're being a comedian or a magician or an entertainer once you get a little bit of fame or even if you don't get a lot of fame at the beginning go do charity work as well because it's great to be seen in all facets mm -hmm. and also it's good to be seen as a really caring person don't do charities if you don't believe in it or mm -hmm. believe for them do it because you want to because you're not going to do a good job if you don't believe in it but i think it's so important to give back oh, yeah. i know jamie masada you probably know this at the laugh yes. factory in la every thanksgiving oh, he yeah gives feed, away food yeah. and he feeds the homeless and mm -hmm. the, and co comedians go down there and they'll hand away the stuff and it's and the club's closed and I think they do a show later too that yes. evening but they give away food you know he yeah. does the same thing at Christmas I believe and Jamie's been so supportive you know and he came over I think it was from Israel Tel Aviv to got that club with he bored 10 grand and he bought it off the Marx Brothers you know probably the whole story but he worked very hard and now it's nice to give back you know I mm -hmm. think it's, it's just good karma and it for sure, you, you it's know, good karma. You know, it, yeah. It, yeah, it balances out all the evil you've done in life. I think so, because no one's perfect, yeah. you know? Yes, so, I, I know. bless your heart. I Tell know. us about the Magic you Castle know. show. Oh, yeah, so I'm playing Magic Castle. So once I do this week, because in Vegas, for people who don't know, um, there's good weeks in Vegas and bad weeks, meaning when the the um, environment's busy and not busy, because people have lives. And in Vegas, usually J December 1st to December 16th it's really slow the reason why is it's after thanksgiving mm -hmm. so people have been here already and they go home to their families and work and save up money and then after like the 15th 16th is when kids are out of school people take vacation and now you're into christmas mm -hmm. and so usually vegas really takes off that weekend going into the weekend of christmas uh -huh. so i usually try to take those two weeks off in december from vegas because it's just not as busy for ticket sales so that's why i'm going to la i'm playing hollywood at the magic castle which is right in hollywood hills uh, from the 11th to the 17th so you're invited I'm it's my first time of the year you are popping my magic castle I'm, charity i'm driving there a million times charity, i'm like same. i would never go there like a same. stupid little bitch try to sneak in i want to go there with same. a great magician who invited me there exactly my dream came true yes now I'm you're gonna in. go there like there a vip go. merry christmas See? Yes. There you go. I'm so, so excited. So, yeah, so that's the week of 11 to the 17th. 11 to the 17th. Yeah. So, where do we buy tickets? Castle. You can buy, well, you can't buy tickets. It's a private club. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you can only be invited. So, if you know somebody, um, you can get invited to the club. And usually that week's really sold out because of the holidays. Mm -hmm. For you, we'll put you on the list. <gasps> never a problem. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. So, um, it's a 21 and over club. So, it's invite only. Mm -hmm. And basically, for people that don't know what it is, it's called the Hollywood Magic Castle. And it's like the old Hollywood from the 1940s. Oh, yeah. You yes. got to dress up. You got to wear a gown or a dress. Ooh. No running shoes no jeans all that stuff no mini skirts guys gotta wear suit tie nice shoes no running shoes and um and you have a nice dinner there and there's about seven magicians a night that play there in the small close-up room the medium-sized room which is like a, almost a small comedy club and the big room which is the palace which which uh, my show is going to be playing there that week Ooh. and i'm bringing my guest act lefty who's actually also in my show you'll meet him on sunday awesome and he's phenomenal so yeah we, i love hollywood though you know you, you you live and work in hollywood but when you work and live there I don't know if you take it for granted or not, but I go to LA every few weeks to shoot stuff for work. But I feel so lucky working in Hollywood, even though, you know, 
maybe I'm not Jim Carrey and I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not, you know, the biggest star in the world, Tom Cruise. But anytime I work in Hollywood, I just love it because I grew up reading and watching TV movies about Hollywood. And my first time when I was like for you seeing Grauman's Chinese Theater, I shot some TV show in front of it. I could not believe I was in Hollywood shooting a TV show. Like I just couldn't. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I never thought that would happen. So even when I go back to the Magic Castle, I've been playing there for 27 years now. I still get excited. I still love it. You know what I mean? So, that's amazing. That's yeah. the that's why like that's what people need like, because when when you told me um you, you some of your like very rich successful famous people they they are sad mm. and it's because they lost the excitement. Mm. Yeah, lost the magic of why yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it just become Yes, you know, a job. Life, a job. And also, I always tell people, I think people forget the value of a dollar. I think they really do. And what I mean by that is I know the dollar is really not great right now, meaning you, you, you can't go shopping now. You can't buy four things without spending 100 bucks. I don't care where you go. I know, but I'm not meaning that. I'm meaning a dollar. So in our business, as an entertainer, you'll, make, you'll do some shows for free. You'll do some shows for 60 bucks for a few minutes. And you'll do some shows for 10 or $15,000 or even more for an hour. And that's wonderful. But I always tell people when you're making that 15, 20, $25,000 for a show in our business, sometimes a friend will call them when they're locally in Vegas and go, Hey, would you pop into my friend's party? It's got a penthouse and he only wants you to come in for 10 minutes. Cause he, he really couldn't believe you're in town. Would you just pop in and like for 10 minutes, do a couple quick things for like a thousand bucks. It's just, it's my treat. They, they don't have any money, but would you just do it? And most of my friends go, I don't work for a thousand bucks. I don't, I would never do that. I work for 15,000 or 25,000. I'm going, wait a minute. You live in Vegas. You hop in your car. It takes 15 minutes to get to a hotel for 20 people that couldn't believe you'd walk in their room, which probably most wouldn't. And they're going to pay you a thousand dollars for 10 minutes to do a couple jokes or do a couple magic tricks. And then you go back home to your glass of wine, your fire and your dogs and your husband or wife or girlfriend. It's a thousand dollars. Most people don't make $1,000 in a week. And you can go down there in within an hour, get ready, do 10 minutes of whatever you do for a living, and then go home. It's $1,000. I know you're making $25,000 a night or even people that make it, but that's where I go. People forget the value of a dollar because 1000 bucks is still a lot of money yeah. to most people in the world. Yeah. And that's what frustrates me the most. People forget the value of what a dollar used to mean to them. Because yeah. if you were starting out in comedy, we've all been there. If you got paid a thousand dollars for ten minutes when you were starting out, when you were lucky to even get twenty five bucks for like doing three minutes, or, or a t- drink a ticket, anything, exactly, or a drink ticket, or or chicken wings in the back, yeah, yeah. or a food that night, yeah. you would be so thrilled. So I always tell people when comedians make it really big or magicians are, don't forget that day, or figure out that day in your life that that thousand dollar offer would have meant your rent payment for the month. It would have made you go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning not worrying. Yeah. I know now that might not be the case, but don't forget that. So yes. get off your ass, mm-hmm. go down and do 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. You'll make those 20 people blow their minds that you walked into their room when they see you on TV every day and they cannot believe you would actually do this, first of all. It's, I think it's that almost Bill Murray idea. Because Bill Murray is a guy that will just show up. He doesn't need money. He's past that. He has tons of money. But he will just show up because he can. Mm-hmm. And he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. And he's, he doesn't... He's iconic, but he doesn't get that in his head, you know, and that's why there's that Bill Muir experience everyone hears about that he'll just pop up and write, because he's not forgotten what it's like not to be Bill Murray and to be wanted. So I think never forget your worth and, re- and realize that your worth is always oversold when you're famous. No one's ever worth that much money. You're just really lucky that that many people want to see you and they'll buy a ticket because one day it's, you know, it's not always going to be there. So. I, I love that you shared this with me because it really reminded me of Joan Rivers and that's exactly the same thing she said. Really? Never, ever say no to an opportunity yes. for you to do what you love because mm-hmm. of the money. That's right. And yeah. that's just so true. And that's why mm-hmm. she... Kept yeah. it reinventing herself. She always worked. At 80s. Yeah, she, she just kept it working. Worked. She yeah. even carries like a big casino, a small place. Yes. When she can tell, get paid any money to tell jokes, she yes. just feel like she is still relevant. Like you're still, Same thing. you still want you. Totally. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's a craft. You, you it Doing is. it for 10 minutes yeah. is not, it's no. good. Yeah. Well, perfect example is I just played Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank uh, two weeks ago. And mm-hmm. I haven't played there since COVID. And I just came in, I did one night. I think it was a Saturday night. I did the 930 spot because uh, Jay Leno had the 730. Mm-hmm. So Jay Leno, for those people who don't know, in LA, he lives about 20 minutes away in Beverly Hills or Bel Air, something like that. He still works all the time. He loves to work. He does Hermosa Beach comedy and magic, and he does flappers now. 
And I was excited to meet him because I've never met Jay Leno. And so I'm there early. I, with me, I got to set a few things up. I'm hanging out. I come in because I want to see his set. He's sitting in the green room. If you know Flappers Comedy Club, it's this tiny little green room, no bigger than a walk-in closet in a nice home in L.A. And it's got writing on the walls, and you get these chicken fingers that are delicious. Ugly for like 10 painting bucks. Bill, uh, Bill, Bill Burr. That's right, exactly, yeah. And so I walk in. He's no kidding. He's in a suit with his wife. They've been married forever, sitting there eating chicken wings and celery, like all the other comics, like like as if he's a teenager, <laughs> chatting away. I walked in. I'm a bit nervous because I've never met Jay. And let's be honest, Jay Leno's a big star and a legend. And I walk in. He says hi. You mentioned that you recognize him in Vegas because my, obviously my picture is all over the place here. I said, oh my God, it's an honor to meet you. And we started chatting. We started talking about cars and we started talking about old Vegas. And you knew Harry Basil, who's the guy that Oh, produces. I love Harry yeah. Basil. I just did a, a you know. Covina. Did you? Oh, yeah. Great, it's yeah, beautiful. Nice. Isn't it cute it's cute theater? Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. I love it. He's so yeah. old Hollywood. His wife is a yes. sweet. Laura is, oh, Laura? Laura is the sweetest. I yeah. love Laura. So he produces my show here and he also is the general manager of the Laugh Factory here. And we he started right away. Jay Leno was like, oh my God, Basil. Is he still, what is he doing? I said, he runs the club, he still runs that club. And he remembers Harry, ba when they were kids, they were performing together. And I said, I'm really excited to see you work, sir. I said, I've never seen you work. And he says, I'm, I, I'm excited for you to see me work. And we started talking and then we were waiting to go on. And there was 200 people in the club because he sold it out, but he can sell out, you know, 3,000 seats in the middle of nowhere, but he's doing that. He doesn't have to work, but he is. So I'm standing there beside him. He's like, well, I better clock in now. And he was introduced and he walked on stage and did his set the way he normally do it. I talked to one of the guys at Flappers. I said, how much do you think he's making off this thing? Because he doesn't, he said, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. He's, yeah, we make about six grand off this whole night because that's what he, that's the ticket sales. The sales are about 35 bucks a ticket because it's our comedy club. He gives the money all back to the club. He doesn't take any money. He says his opening acts get paid, of course, but he just needs to work because he wants to be good every time he works. And this is not important for him to get paid here. He's, what's important for him is to be good every time when he does get paid a lot of money. And the only way to get good and be good is to always work. And if you don't always work, you're just not going to stay good. And, it, and I so just was true. blown away that he was acting like a young comic starting out. And his ego was like a lump, young comic starting out, and he had no ego at all. And I said, it was probably the nicest celebrity I've met in 20 years. It blew me away, and his set was amazing because he's just so great at what he does. And then he'll hop in a plane next week and make 150,000 bucks in the middle of New York or yeah. you know Cleveland or something. But, but I love the fact that he really is an artist to his craft. Yeah, he, he doesn't. The, I know he's got tons of money, so money isn't important. I know that six grand to somebody starting out would be amazing, of course. But what I'm trying to say is, he still is working every night with his wife, eating chicken wings in the back that'll give you a heart attack, but they're delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> doing his full set wasn't even he didn't even shorten a set. He just did the full set, hopped in his car, and he buzzed back home, and that was his night. I mean, I'm thinking that's a, and he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't need to work a day in his life ever again. Yeah, you know, I think what is it worth? Five hundred million dollars. But he did it because he loves it. So if you have that love for your craft, mm -hmm. magic, comedy, singing, you will always work in the business. Exactly. You know what I mean? You yeah. may not be, you know, as big as, you know, as, as some of the biggest comics in the world. You may not be Kevin Hart, but very few people are Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. You know, it's luck, timing, everything. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're still in the game, Phyllis Diller was never Kevin Hart, but Phyllis Diller was a different era. Yes. She was a legend. I you love know I mean? Phyllis. Phyllis Diller never sold out an arena, but it wasn't her era. There was no arenas to sell out for comics, yes. you know? Yeah. Um, and she was my one of my big um, people that I looked up to, hence the hair and everything else, but she never stopped working. She would, same thing, she would do anything just love to work. Her. Yeah. yeah, so these are people that inspire me those days when you're kind of like, you know, it's a slow month, or you're not getting paid as much as you think you should or whatever, but, but you're still walking on stage, you know? Uh, so if you want to walk on stage, do it, and don't oh. worry about the money so much. Yeah, know? walking on stage is my drug. Yes, it is. Yeah, it it's really my is. drug. I'm sober. Mm -hmm. I don't drink alcohol anymore, and yeah. just walking on stage, it is, yeah. making people laugh, looking at my kids' smiling face, and yeah. the, that one day my mom is not mad at me, it's yes. all happiness That's for right. me. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? It's a win, right? Yes. Yeah. Where can um, mm -hmm. my fans find you, Murray? They can find me on Instagram at Murray Saw Chuck. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, underneath all that stuff. My YouTube channel is uh, Magic Murray. That's what Amazing. I do. Yeah. So. Thank you for coming, making time to come to my podcast. Well, I'm so happy I got to chat with you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for of, having me on. Of course. You Thank know, you so much. I want to come see you this week in, uh, at Vegas as well. Yes, let me know. Vegas. I'll, I'll put you on the list with your uh, yeah. with your wife. Yes. If your mama is here yes. with her, I'll bring too. her too. Yeah, oh, yeah. that would be wonderful. I've never been to that club yet. I know yes. I know everybody there, but I've never been to the club yet. So Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Bye bye, guys. I'll see you guys in um Boston, Love Boston, December fourteen to sixteen. Uh, I love you guys so much. I promise you, I'll never miss any、uh, week. You know, every week you have a pod. Bye. 